All right, so I made an auto tile map or the grid map. You can get the script and two mesh libraries with the GitHub link in the description. Let me show you how to use it and then I'll show you how it works. So first you create a scene and you add a grid map and you attach the script to it. So auto grid map. Then you can add the mesh library, which will be your tile set. So I'll use dungeon. And I'll show you how to make your own tile set later. And then you need a mesh library for drawing on the main grid, which is only an invisible dot. So I'll use this point mesh lib here. And yeah, that's ready. So now I can click the refresh button here and it generated my sub grid map. And then if I select the mesh instance here, which is the point uh, and I can now draw, this will apply to the auto tile map on the cells. Uh, so you draw invisible dot on the grid map and the sub grid map has all the sub tile. You can draw, you can uh, remove, and that's pretty much how it works. If you want to use it with code, you can either inherit fr from the script or uh, just use it with uh, another script. So let's say I use a script on my main node, create. Let's say I just want to create a platform. So here I get the grid map. Then I'm going to do a platform, which is 20 by 20. And I'm just going to set it to be centered on the origin. So zero, zero. So it's going to go in the negatives. And at the end, I need to update bit mask region because um, it's not going to update, uh, apply the auto tile map on each cell. When you draw them, it would be a bit uh, laggy. So at the end, when all your cell are set, then you update the region. You can give it two coordinates. If you want some, uh, a small region to be updated, uh, if you don't, it's going to update all of them. So let's try that. I'm going to add a camera here just to see it. So add camera. And let's move it back. And let's see if I play that. Then I have a big platform 20 by 20 and it's auto tiled. So that's pretty good. You can use it like if it was a normal grid map. You just set the cell to zero so they are used. If you do minus one, it's going to remove them and you update it after. So that's pretty much it. All right. If you want to create your own tile set, you will need 27 tiles for all the possibilities. And I'm naming the tiles based on the occupied neighbor cells. Uh, it's like a bit mask for a 2D tile set. So here the naming I, I'm using, the first letter will describe the top bit mask and the second letter will describe the bottom part. So if you have the V letter, this would be void. So there's nothing and F will be full. So the tile VF, uh, this one here would be void at the top and full on the bottom. So that's just a, a ground tile. When it's a L, it means like there's a three cell used like a L shape. Most of the time L is used with empty or full E or F. If it's a three cell that are used or three cell that are empty. Some tiles have L or R. This is for left or right because uh, yeah, those tiles, they are mirrored, but you can't rotate them so they fit. So it's a mirrored uh, version of, the, of the, the tile. So if you make all of those tiles, you name them correctly, then you can export that and import it in Godot. Normally to export them, I'll do uh, export and I'll export a GLTF, GLB. Uh, I remember settings, so I don't have to do it every time. I check only selected object and I don't export the materials because I'm just gonna redo it, but you can leave it if you if you want. And then you can export and then in Godot. So when I go in Godot, I can open my dungeon GLB, open. So I get them without the texture. And what I do is I select them all at the same time when material and I can add a new one then open the material in albedo texture i'll put my dungeon texture and it applies it so all my naming is correct you can also add the uh, collision to do so you select the tile and you go up here in the menu you click mesh and create tri mesh static body and you have to do this for all the tiles and then when all of this is done you can do scene and you need to convert to mesh library and you can give it a name. So I go in my tile set and I would save this under the name of dungeon T-R-E-S and save. You can still save this scene if you want to change uh, the texture later or something like that. So I'll do control shift save tile set. This will be the dungeon T-S-C-N. 
And for the point Meshlib, the one that it's only the for, for the main grid map point Meshlib, which is only a kind of invisible dot just to, to draw on the map. For this one, what I'll do is just create a 3D scene. I'll add a mesh instance. And I set the mesh to point mesh. I don't change anything else and I just save that. So scene, convert to mesh library, and then and then this one I'll I'll, I'll call it point mesh. And save. So then this mesh library is only invisible dot, so you don't see it on the map, and you only see your sub grid map. Because the dot is there on the map, on the cell, but it's only to know which cell are used or not. So we don't want to see it, but it needs to be there. Let's look at the code. So first is the bit mask. I made it a bit like a 2x2 two two auto tile map. I have some bit that I will set to get a 8-bit mask. And they represent all the 8 corners of a cube, of the cell that will be used. Yeah, and then we'll come back to the setup function. For now, I'm just gonna look at this part. This part is for getting the correct mesh for the bit mask. So if you make your own, even if they are not in the right order, this code here will get the mesh by the name, as long as you named it correctly. For this, you need to set your tile map in the inspector. So at the top here, I export a resource, which is mesh library 3D, and this will be equal as a mesh library. So then we can use the function on it. Here, we find item by name, and we get the index. So this will just be the index of the mesh. Then it's the fun part, setting every possibility to the correct mesh and rotation. So for each tile, we will look at their neighbor and get the bit mask. So if the bit for top up left, top up right, and top down left is set in the bit, the bit mask, then we'll get the this mesh L full and void with no rotation. We'll see later how we get that. There, there is a lot of possibility with this because each of the 27 tiles, some of them can have rotation, some of them don't. So that, that's the, the top part. You don't really need to rotate that one. And after all of these, this is the function to get the mask itself. This is looking at all eight big tile, each composed of eight smaller tile. So here we'll look at all the 26 surrounding cell to see if they are occupied or empty. But we're not looking at the small cell, but the big one. Since the small one can be empty if they're inside a big block, because the tile inside doesn't have to be visible. Since it's full, we don't even draw it like this. So the get main cell function will transform the sub cell coordinates into the big one to check if the big one is used. Let's look at let's look at the first one here. Let's say you have a sub tile that you want to know if the top up left corner is used. We go on top in the y axis, then we go up in the the Z axis, and then we go left in the X. And that's the tile we'll look into to see if it's you. And to get the main cell item, I have a function here, get main cell item. I simply divide by two, I floor the result and make sure it's an integer. So yeah, we do this for, for all the corner, all the edge, and then we get the six side. After all that, we can get a bit for each main eight corner for the two by two by two. So yeah, if the top up left, up left, up up, up left, top left and front are used, then the bit for top up left will be set. And we do that for all corners, and then we return the mask. And yeah, so let's say three of those are set, then we can go in our dictionary here and find out which one it is. So if those three would be set, we would use void L full. And depending on which one we get, we have a different orientation too. So I hope that's clear. Let's go to the next part. Let's look at the setup. So for the setup, if the mesh library is not set, then it's useless to, to, to do anything. So we just return. So then we get the subgrid map in the tree here. But if it doesn't already exist, so if it's like the first time you create your grid map, we will create it and add it in the tree. But since this is a, a script that can be used in the editor, uh, at the top here, you need to have the tool keyword before anything. You can run this script in the editor. Here we create a grid map, uh, then we add it to the tree, then we change the name, and we set the cell size to be half the size of the main grid map. So 
The main one is two by two by two, and this one is one, one, one. Then we set the mesh library for it. And since it's a tool script and we run it in the editor, we need to call this set owner and we get the scene root for the tree. Because if you don't do that, it's just, it's just not going to appear in the tree. So that's pretty much how I get the subgrid map. Then this setup is called when it's ready. It's going to call setup and it's going to work. But I also added a set refresh. So if you want to refresh your grid map, so yeah, when you just put your main grid map, you add the tile set, and then you want to start drawing, you click refresh and it's going to run the setup function. To do my refresh here, what I do is I export a bool called refresh, and then I create a set function. You just do set get, and the first function here is set. You could do a get function also, but you can just don't put anything and it's okay. So then my set refresh will just call setup. That's it. So with that, when you go in the editor inspector here, you have your refresh uh, checkbox. And if you click it, it's just refreshed. So that's pretty much it. When you want to set a cell in the grid map or draw it in the editor, the set cell item is used. So I override it to execute my own code. Here I call the base function, the normal set cell item. So the main cell is set correctly. Then the next part here is executed only if you are in the editor when you draw it with your mouse, because it would look at too many cells for nothing if this would be called every time you set a item, if you, every time you set a cell with code. Let's say you set a hundred cell with code and call that every time, it's going to be a bit harder because this one will look at the surrounding tiles too, to update them also. So it, it will set the current cell and the surrounding tiles so they match. So yeah, if you're not in the editor, uh, it will just set the cell normally. And then you should call the update region so your auto tile is set correctly. So this function here, update sub cell, this is where I update the cell with the correct tile. First, if the main cell is empty, then we simply remove the subcell if there is any and return. Then we get the bit mask with the function we saw earlier. And we check if it's in the dictionary. So meshes, if it has the given mask, then we'll get the mesh, the rotation, orientation, and we'll set the subgrid map with the corresponding mesh and rotation. So that's pretty much it. And if we don't find it, that means probably that it's inside. So we don't have any tile for it. And we just set it to nothing. We remove it. Then if you set the cell with code, the cell won't be updated automatically. You will have to call this function here, update bitmask region. If you want to update a big region, or if you want to update a small region, you can just call uh, update bitmask area. This one will just update one tile with the surrounding one. So let's say maybe if you use the terrain and you, you make something that the player can break a tile, then you would call this one. You don't need to update a big area. Uh, but if you need to update a big region, you can give it two variable, the start and end. If you don't want to update everything, you can do that. So if you don't set the parameter here, the start and end, we'll get the whole map. So we'll get all cell that are used in the grid map. Then for each of them, we'll get the maximum and minimum value. This is only to get the minimum and maximum to get everything. And we find our start and end value with that. We now need to get the distance between them by subtracting them. And we get the absolute value of that. So it's only a positive value. Then we get the starting value. We get the maximum value. So the biggest one. Then for the distance in each direction, we will update the cell and then we subtract the distance and we should with that update all the map. And yeah, this update cell will only update yeah, the cell. It will not update the neighbor. So it's faster than updating all the border also. So if you want to draw on the map, you can change the layer with Q and E. Q will go down, E will go up. So you can draw walls. Uh, you can rotate the grid with Z X and C. You can change the axis. So this is on the Y axis. This is on the uh, Z axis. And we can go back on the X. And you can also use Shift to select 
uh, a big region, you can control C to copy it and just click to paste it. You can just uh, control C again, paste it there, control C. And then you can also do control F to fill a region. So let's say I want to do a big wall. I'll change my orientation, move on the side, then shift, select that, control F, and there you go. So that's some tips for the grid map. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you have any question, you can leave them in the comments or you could come on the Discord to ask them. Uh, it, it might be faster to answer. And yeah, the code uh, and two tile maps. There's gonna be this uh, dungeon tile map and a grass, dirt and grass tile map on the uh, GitHub. You can get them and just play with them. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time, I guess. Bye bye.